guys, this is a video that's got a lot of technical data in it, but it may be one of the most important that you've ever seen, and I want you to pay attention to what we're looking at. These are deformations in the Earth since 2009, and it's got to do with our poles shifting. Check this out, 2011. These hot spots are, are representing the affected areas. Notice off the tip of South America and off the uh, west coast of Canada. See that? In Alaska, 2010, 2011. These are satellite measured differences. This is a very rapid change. The data has come out on this now. It's highly unusual, and it's got everything to do with our polar drift. And we're not talking about just magnetic poles anymore. This is what we've been talking about, the possibility of actually shifting the physical poles. Look at this up into 2015. This is in millimeters. You see this? These are actual raises and lowering areas of, in the Earth's surface telling us the poles are shifting. Our, we know that the Arctic vortex is in a crazy pattern. You guys in California are still cleaning up from mudslides and, and uh, houses falling off cliffs and power outages. This is very important. This is a model uh, deformation patterns from 2001 January to 2015. This is everything to do with the polar drift. This is the Earth's pole. These are def the green line, and I'm going to read the data that you're seeing is the average line. The red and black lines are the X and Y deviations. Check it out in the year 2000, guys. These are polar abnormalities. In 2010 was when the Japan quake hit. During that period after 2000, after that sudden change, that in 2004, the great Sumatran quake, quarter million people lost their lives. Pull back up, and I'm, I'll give you some of the explanations and show you the data. Again, the green line average. The deviation in these times. Now, this is the latest chart. These coordinates on this chart usually are 30 days old. Now, we're dealing with both the physical and magnetic poles now. That's got everything to do with the polar shift, guys. That's how much trouble this planet can A lot can of talk in. on the Internet as of late in regards to a major event to take place in September of 2015, a giant asteroid to hit Earth to land in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, causing a giant tidal wave, a tsunami to wipe out parts of the United States of America. People are having dreams and being given visions and prophecy of a giant tidal wave to wipe out parts of the United States. Many are quoting scripture, Revelation 8. These cosmic bullets originate on the far side of Mars in the main asteroid belt, where a bracelet of celestial debris circles the sun. Millions of rocky fragments, building blocks of a planet that never quite came together when the solar system was formed. What's often depicted as a busy cosmic junkyard is actually more like a big empty speedway. The rocks are far apart and moving very fast, ranging in size from pebbles to boulders, to rocks the size of Mount Everest. Occasionally, the tug of Jupiter's enormous gravity drags an asteroid off course, causing it to crash into another asteroid. Some veer away into new orbits that cross the paths of Mars, Earth, Venus or Mercury. Another ring of debris called the Oort Cloud is the source of most comets, which are big, rocky ice balls that orbit the Sun and cross the paths of the inner planets. All the inner planets, and our Moon, bear the scars of numerous asteroid and comet impacts. Prophecy, dreams, and visions are alive in the world today, just as they were when the Holy Spirit poured out at Pentecost in the upper room. There are prophecies today and they are to edify the church just as the Apostle Paul tells us. Good afternoon everyone. 
Today I would like to talk about the bombogenesis called the bomb cyclone, the remnants of Typhoon Nuri displacing cold Arctic air down into the United States, dropping temperatures by 60 degrees Fahrenheit in a day, breaking snow records from the 1800s as well as temperature records from 1877 and 1882 all throughout the western part of the United States. Super Typhoon Nuri tracked off of Taiwan, past Japan, rushed over the Kamchatka Peninsula dumping three feet of snow around Vladivostok, and then continued north up into the Bering Strait and turned into one of the lowest recorded millibar readings at 924 millibar breaking the previous records. There was a storm in 1977 similar but this one could also be in the record books as the possible strongest storm of this nature. And as it continued north it had nowhere to go except right up into the Arctic Circle. Now this was warm moist air that collided with the Arctic dry air. You can see pretty clearly how that air was forced southward. It had nowhere to go. It was two colliding masses. This is the 500 millibar chart. The dark red in the center is the remnants of Nuri and how you can see how it pushed that Arctic air further south toward the United States. Something remarkable off of this is that the air mass up above Alaska is actually warmer than what it is down in the central United States. As you can see the temperature difference there, it's 20 degrees Celsius up across Alaska in the Bering Strait area, but it's minus 20 Celsius down in the United States, or about minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. The effect that it had was dropping the temperatures 64 degrees Fahrenheit in a single day. Now for those viewers that don't know Celsius and Fahrenheit, here's the conversion for you. 60 degrees Fahrenheit is 15 degrees Celsius. That's a huge temperature drop. And this wasn't in a single location. As you can see, it was across the entire central United States. Some areas, Lamar, Colorado, 41 degree drop in a single day. Amarillo, Texas, 55 degree drop in a day. And when you start to add up these temperature swings on a chart, you can start to see that this is not good for the human body, dropping from 80 degrees down to 20 degrees in a single afternoon. And one of the areas where there was an extreme fluctuation in temperature was in Wyoming. Colorado, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, all throughout that area and as well to the east. Denver, 1882 cold record broken, negative 13 Fahrenheit or minus 25 Celsius. And with temperature records like these being broken across this part of the country, although Casper, Wyoming, the temperature data only went back to 1939. In the air, and it doesn't feel right for September. It doesn't feel like fall. It doesn't feel like summer. It just feels abnormal. And something else I want to notice, I wanted to ask a question about for everybody else as well, is how are the chemtrails in your area? Because at least in my area, they have completely stopped. And part of those chemtrails, they create some form of, of clouds. Clouds trap heat in. How many years have they been doing this? We know from a lot of the scientific research that there was a um, an ice age, so to speak, coming, have they prolonged it so it's going to end up being worse initially? That's what I'm beginning to wonder because I just can't imagine. I said that when you speak against the power of God, when you speak against the miracle of God, when you speak against the fire of God, when you speak against the anointing of God, when you speak against the prophecies of God, God says you have blasphemed the Holy Ghost. And you who have done so, God will visit you. You will be visited. They will all know. They will all know. They will all know. The whole world will see. You will go down. In the name of Jesus. And the devil has, 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 has creeped up on these men to think they know a lot. Come on, somebody. But they don't know what is to come. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. But I'm going to tell you in Jesus' name what is to become of you. You don't believe in prophecy? You're going to believe when it comes upon you. My God who have blasphemed the Holy Ghost. Say amen, somebody.
wake up young men wake up young men come on somebody wake up young men it's power time right now it's prophecy time right now no good mighty prophecy come on somebody no